Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Jason Mackey's First 10, a short version podcast talking all things Pittsburgh sports. Today is Friday, November 1st. We're going to get into some college football talk and apologies right off the hop for my voice. Don't have much of one. I've been fighting a cold, but going to try to make it through here. Uh, the Penguins also coming off a 2-1 victory over the Anaheim Ducks. Sidney Crosby was outstanding in that one. Have a lot to talk about as well as some of your questions. But first, want to remind you that we're brought to you by Edgar Snyder and Associates. If you're injured in an accident, you're probably wondering what's next. For over 40 years, Edgar Snyder and Associates has helped injury victims answer that question. Whether it's gathering evidence, collecting medical records, or dealing with insurance companies, Edgar Snyder and Associates has helped over 75,000 people handle what's next. Call 1-800-94-EDGAR or visit edgarsnyder.com for a free consultation. And remember, there's never a fee unless they get money for you. All right, let's, let's um, we'll get into some college football stuff, but I actually want to lead with the Penguins here um, just because it's the most timely um, and sort of results-based, and I was impressed with what I saw. Uh, tail end of that game last night, Sidney Crosby in overtime, uh, the play he made, and just the overall game he had scoring both of the Penguins' goals and the process that they put forth against the Ducks. That is more of a winnable recipe for the Penguins than anything that they've done through their 3-7 in one start. Uh, just some numbers, shots-wise, they doubled up the Ducks. 46 to 23, high danger chances, 13 to 7. It was not perfect by any stretch. I think the Penguins expect a lot more of themselves, but they did a better job managing the puck. They did a much better job sorting out defensive coverages and sort of adjusting their system a little bit to play a more responsible game. It's something I would like to see this team do even more so than it did last night against the Ducks. Recognize what you are. Um, the Penguins are trying to play still like they did in 16, 17, and 18. When they had a bunch of speed, when they had more offensive skill, they don't. And I think a lot of times coaches get caught up in, we're going to play a certain way because this is our identity and this is how we see the game and this is how we want our team to play. That's great if you have the horses. The Penguins don't necessarily do that. And last night was one of the first games I've seen where they've been able to adjust their style of play to what they had. And you might have to win some games 2-1. You might have to win some games 3-2. And they did a good job of that. Alex Nedeljkovic was excellent when he needed to be. 22 saves last night, but Sid was the biggest takeaway for me. Past two games for Sid, two goals, three assists, five points. Plus three, nine shots, 14 attempts. The game winner obviously has won 78% of his face-offs, averaging about 21 and a half minutes per game. I've told this story before, but Sid likes to laugh about if you get asked about not scoring, that generally means you're going to start scoring again. That started between us and Vancouver. I was asking Gensel about a, Jake Gensel, of course, about a goal scoring drought. And it's just Sid and Gensel in the corner of the dressing room at, uh, what is it, Rogers Arena. And, you know, we finish up and Sid's laughing, kind of elbows him and said, it means you're about to get one. Um, and then, sure enough, Jake Gensel gets a goal last night. A couple years later, or maybe it was the same, I don't remember, um, we're at PPG Paints Arena, and I had asked Sid about not scoring, sort of like um, in jest, scores a goal that night, finishes his scrum, and then looks at me and goes, don't wait so long next time, okay? Like, he he just, and, and so I guess I say all that to say on Monday, he was asked about not scoring. What do you know? Past two games, five points. Um, I'm not worried about Sidney Crosby. I think he's going to be just fine. Not a big issue there. All right, so let's turn our attention to some college football stuff Two very big games among area teams, Pitt, Penn State. Pitt is at SMU. Penn State is hosting Ohio State. I will be there for that. So we'll call it game day. Um, Fox's uh, Saturday game of the week, uh, big Saturday, whatever they're calling it these days. But um, two just gigantic games for those teams. And I was trying to think which one means more to each individual team. In Pitt, you can make the argument that it keeps them better positioned in the race for a college football playoff bid. Um, and it kind of hurts that they don't play Miami during the regular season. If Pitt loses, they're probably out of the ACC championship game. They would not have the tiebreaker over Clemson. Um, it's it, Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's probably a little premature to, to sort of um, prognosticate that. But for whatever reason... Um, the Penn State game uh, rings to me as a little bit more high stakes. Maybe it's the rankings of the team. Maybe it's how Franklin has fared against top 10 teams, against Ohio State, against Michigan. Um, he's 1-9 and nine against Ohio State. It's been um, certainly a struggle 
for him. And if you think about what happens with Penn State, if they can win that game, how the rest of their season sets up, they can, like, they have Washington, Purdue, Minnesota, and Maryland. Those should be winnable games for Penn State. If, again, getting down the road a little bit, if you're able to beat Ohio State, that could be an undefeated season. That could be a Big Ten championship, college football playoff, bye, all of that stuff. Entirely possible. All right. We're going to talk about a little bit more within those two games. I'm going to try to catch my breath and get my voice back in our 30-second break here, but a quick message from the Bradenton Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Embrace the laid-back charm of island life while sinking your toes in the sand and discovering real, authentic Florida in the Bradenton area. Unspoiled beauty and pristine beaches, a vibrant waterfront downtown energized by local arts and culture, fresh Floribian cuisine with a flourish of rich history, and friendly locals ready to welcome you to this preserved paradise on Florida's Gulf Coast. Plan your visit today at BradentonGulfIslands.com. And welcome back to First 10. We're here middle of the morning, about 10 minutes, talking all kinds of different things. Pittsburgh sports. I'm your host, Jason Mackey. Thank you for finding us. I want to preview a little bit Pitt and SMU. I'm very curious about this matchup just because it's so rare, right? First time these two have met in the regular season since 1948. It's also a rematch of the storied 2011 BBVA Compass Bowl. Who could ever forget that one? Uh, but no, it's it, a very important game for Pitt. SMU is a sneaky good ACC team, um, an interesting season trajectory for them as well. Kevin Jennings took over at quarterback um, and has been very good. Largely, he's been productive. He's thrown for nearly 1,600 yards, 10 touchdowns, five interceptions. Um, Third-year sophomore Preston Stone was the starter. Um, and so Kevin Jennings had some injury concerns early in the week, much like he's like Eli Holstein. He's going to play, and uh, he's been darn good at various times. The one sort of bugaboo for uh, SMU has been turning the football over. They've done that too much. And so uh, to me, that's the key for Pitt. They have to be able to turn it over. They've done that lately. Five interceptions against Syracuse need more of that. They've put a bunch of pressure on the quarterback. They need more of that. So make Jennings uncomfortable. If he's not 100%, pass rush needs to be on point. Uh, they need to continue what they've done defensively. And I'd also be looking for the offense um, to bounce back and to see, you know, I want to see more of what we saw through non-conference play. Hasn't been quite the same in the ACC. They're averaging 338 yards in ACC games versus 500 or so um, in their non-conference slate. Desmond Reed didn't do a ton against Syracuse. I'm expecting more out of him. Pitt just had 217 yards. But Eli Holstein, once again, uh, the quarterback on Pitt's side, he is going to play. He's fine injury-wise. Pat Narduzzi said that. So, yeah, looking for a bigger game out of them offensively. All right. We just have two minutes left. So I want to get to a couple questions here. There were some good ones. I do need to do a better job of um, asking for these earlier in the day. I forgot about it after Halloween and, and tweeted that out too late at night. So anyway, Dan Suarez asks Juan Soto said he was open to signing with any team in major league baseball. What percentage chance do the pirates actually have? Is it less than zero? Yes, it is Dan. Um, I, I got into this. I, I think it was with Chris Muller on the PM team yesterday. Do they even spend time on this stuff? And I can't imagine they do. I can't imagine they do. I mean, that's just not, it's honestly not an efficient or productive use of time. And so I no, Juan Soto would not bother signing here. The pirates would not be interested in paying him. We're all sort of wasting our time if we think that's going to happen. So yes, probably less than zero. Zach Henry asks if Pitt wins and Penn State loses this weekend, who do you think has a better chance of the college football playoff? And second one, I'll get to this on the back half of Pittsburgh ever adds a fourth major league pro team. Is it likely to be MLS or NBA? Um, so, all right, if Pitt wins and Penn State loses this weekend, better chance. I really like Pitt's chances if they're able to win. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the um, geographical bias. And again, I, I didn't go to either school. I don't have a horse in the race. I went to Westminster. So anybody who's thinking that I prefer Pitt over Penn State or something like that, no. Um, I just think that if Pitt is able to beat SMU, they have one more. Yeah, like I don't think Miami is as good as they're cracked up to be. I don't even know if Clemson is. To me, that puts Pitt right in that discussion. They will have won eight, no, won eight in a row, excuse me, uh, puts a very solid uh, perform. Now, if you say if. If Penn State would win, that's a very, very, very easy question. I think Penn State is in a much better spot. But you're saying if Penn State loses, um, I think Penn State still has a path 
but I would really like what Pitt did at that point. Last one, Kelsey Schwer. If it were to happen, what's more, who's more likely to leave Pitt this season, Cade Bell or Eli Holstein? I hate saying this because I don't want to see either one of them go, and I honestly don't think they will. Uh, but I guess it's mm, maybe Holstein. Maybe Holstein just because there's um, more of a market for that, maybe more of a mechanism with NIL. Some team could swoop in and grab him, although Cade Bell could too. So it's it's kind of tough to rank. I guess my takeaway from the question, and I know this is sidestepping it a little bit, and I'm sorry, Kelsey, is just that I don't want to see either go. And I don't think Pitt will allow either to get away. I think they're, they're quality people, quality coaches, players, and they've really helped the Panthers a lot. I don't think you can afford to let them go. If you need to pay them some more, if you need to give them incentives to stay, that's fine. But they've had too much of an impact. All right, thanks for putting up with me and my voice today. I'm going to try to work on this throughout the day and get this knocked out. I've already tried for uh, about an hour this morning. has not helped. So, uh, yeah, interesting place. Thank you so much for checking out First 10. Appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe. You can get a bunch more content. We'll be back here on Monday. Same time, same place. Talk to you then. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.